All right, guys, if I can get your attention, please. Eyes up front, please. Eyes up front. Come on, come on, come on. I know it's coming close to lunch, and I'm like, yeah, you're all hungry. Set to here are some very important things to say to you. I want you to listen clearly, and I want you to be ready, potentially at the end, for some questions and answers and everything like that. I know you're going to be a good audience. If you guys choose to get up during the, the thing or, or, or take off or anything, be quiet, please. Be considerate of everyone else. These doors make a lot of noise, okay? So in the sign from all that right there, I'm going to leave it up to you, set to. And thank you, and round of applause, guys. Thanks. Hello, everyone. Hello. So, welcome to Las Vegas. Welcome to DEF CON and uh, welcome to Cloud Village. So, myself, I'm Setu and I'm a cloud security architect uh, working at Light Socops. And at the same time, I work for a couple of uh, financial organizations as well, taking care of cloud native infrastructure security aspects. So uh, before going to the talk, this is my first presentation at DEF CON and uh, if I'm not clear and if, if you're not able to follow my talk, you're always welcome to reach out back to me and then I can help, because I'll be standing at the end and I can help you with your questions. So uh, in my organization, the most important uh, uh, tough thing that we I felt and uh, our organization felt is we have too many accounts and achieving compliance ac across all these accounts is a huge complication for us until or unless we have a $300,000 uh, cloud security product or a huge security engineering team who does all the automation and other things for us. So the we wanted to make sure like uh, all the security policies across all the accounts are standardized and there should be a single central so so source of truth and uh, we wanted to automate it as much as possible and provide all those reports to the compliance team. And uh, at the same time, we wanted to be secure. So at the same time, the number of accounts are too many, right? So auditing each and every individual account at scale is a huge manual audit process for us. And uh, we faced it as a, we, we were doing it on an ad hoc basis, but we were not able to automate it. But uh, the, for the, this tool from T-Mobile is a pretty, open source and enterprise ready tool and uh, we were using this for the past three years and I was con contributing for the open source project as well and thought like uh, giving a presentation on this uh, open source product. So the solution is pretty much uh, we wanted to automate as much as possible so we write all those policies and rules and uh, controls as a code and give it to Packbot and Packbot can go ahead and run all these rules across all the assets in the in your fleet of accounts so we have automated the compliance rules and we have automated a reporting on a periodic basis we send out uh, the reports back to our compliance team for our regulations requirements at the same time the best part is we don't just report it we we take actionable insights on top of our reports so we if there is any public history bucket packbot will be able to automatically close that and make it private using automated patches and a quick introduction about Packbot. So it's a platform for continuous compliance monitoring and uh, compliance automation where we do auto fixes for the uh, vulnerabilities and compliance violations at scale. And uh, you can always uh, write new rules and it's very pretty flexible. The REST API is open source. You can write your auto fixes as well and you can customize it uh, to your uh, enterprise requirements. Coming to the architecture of uh, Packbot, so we pretty much have a data collector and a rule engine. What we do is we use uh, AWS Lambda function and cross account rules to go, uh, do, to go ahead and log into each and every account and then grab all the assets from every account and store it in S3 bucket and then ship it to uh, Redshift. And then what we do is we run compliance rules against all these assets. So each and every asset will be having uh, uh, like 10 or 15 rules run against it. So we want, we'll be going ahead and monitoring the compliance at scale, and we, we won't be missing any resources that are non-compliant. So initially we were using uh, AWS Config. It's like we have like uh, 40 rules per account, and each rule is $2, and just for the compliance of one account, it costed us like uh, $200 to $400 for just for one account. And we use uh, like dev test prod and UAT for each application. We wanted to make sure uh, in case of a breach, we wanted to isolate our, uh, we want to reduce our blast radius and we segregated it on uh, this production workload, environment-based and uh, application-based. 
and then all these results will be sent to Elasticsearch. And uh, on top of Elasticsearch, we have the UI, which will be running using Angular and Node. And uh, it will be a very powerful UI. And it's a, it's one of the best open source uh, UIs that I have seen till now. And there's an application load balancer so that uh, most of 80% of the application is completely serverless. The cost for running this is also very less. We use like you know, ECS, EKS, AWS, Fargate, and all this container and serverless uh, services. And at the end, uh, we will be able to uh, see a lot of uh, uh, cost savings because uh, once I onboarded this tool at a couple of organizations uh, that I was working, uh, they were able to get rid of their enterprise secure cloud security rule tools, which were costing like $300,000 per year for them. And it's a huge cost savings, savings for them. So you log into the dashboard of Packbot, and here you'll be seeing a single view of your entire uh, cloud infra environment. So here you'll be able to see the overview of uh, how many policies are available and how many policies were uh, failed, how many audits were failed, how many audits passed. At the same time, you'll be able to see the total number of violations. And these all violations have been categorized in terms of high, medium, low, and critical. So you'll be able to see the number of critical vulnerabilities and take immediate act actions on top of these policy violations. And uh, all these pol policies have been categorized across as uh, four categories. So we use compliance, tagging, cost optimization, and security. So an example for security is if there is a public read-write bucket, it will be mentioned here. And the cost optimization is uh, if there are any uh, EBS volumes that are not used or uh, any underutilized instances, you'll be getting on under those things. And then moving forward, you can, you'll be able to view the overall compliance posture of it. And we use uh, tagging. We wanted to make sure all our resources are tagged and then uh, across all our accounts uh, just for compliance. And because few, we have few applications under PCI scope and few applications under non PCI scope. So we wanted to treat uh, those applications with extra compliance requirements. So we add tags and then uh, you will be able to see the number of vulnerabilities and how many assets were untagged in it. It will be a graph of uh, number of compliance violations over the period of time. So you'll be able to see some pretty good visualizations and you'll be able to sort the policies based on uh, the categories that I have mentioned earlier, cost optimization, security, and all other things. So when you click on one individual policy, you will be able to see how many resources and how many issues are under that uh, policy. So, and also the compliance trend of it. So there are like uh, 564 assets that are being scanned for uh, S3 buckets, whether they are public or not. So we wanted to make sure we don't, uh, uh, we won't be another ca capital war on either any, any other organization breach due to S3 misconfigurations. So we will be able to sort them out based on the application tag as well. So we have internal tags based on the every application. And then you should be able to able to view all the admin panel and all the statistics. And it's a complete open source product. So pretty much uh, uh, I liked it in terms of an enterprise use. And if you go to assets, you will be able to see uh, all your configuration management and number of assets that we are monitoring using Packbot across uh, our 200 plus accounts. So this is a pretty, so based on this, uh, we'll be able to say that uh, Packbot is not just for one account. It's not uh, scalable or something because we use serverless and containers and it's all uh, and ALB as well. So auto scaling is being used. So it's completely scalable. So we will, we were able to uh, monitor as many accounts as we can. And you can, there is a Omni search bar here. Like you can search for assets with using a single pane. So what the issue that we were facing is initially we used to get, uh, we used to use uh, cloud custodian and it's like, it's not a, it, it doesn't have a UI, right? It just so shows us uh, uh, the resources that got failed as per the compliance audits. So we were having tough time in searching for all these uh, resources, which account does this resource belong to? We were having the tough time. So using this, uh, we were able to filter down 
bought or uh, based on the resource and then based on the regions and then we were able to isolate the right get the right assets and we were able to search like for example if we we, we will be scanning our all our eip addresses externally just to make sure no ports are being probed or being exposed since two ports we use shodan man monitor and then we scan them continuously the entire external ip range so we find an external ip which uh, on shodan monitor and we wanted to know to which account that ip belongs to so we were having very tough time in doing that and using this uh, omni search place we were able to just put that ip and then hit enter we'll be getting all the information about that uh, public ip in which account it is and which server is using that and we'll be able to take immediate actions on top of it so this is a place where we are able to see like if there is a resource we were able to see like how many complaints rules were being uh, audited against that uh, resource and we'll be able to see a security posture like overall it is 98% compliant so we can understand that there are few rules that are failing so we'll see what are the rules and then we'll take we'll ask those developer teams or the devops team to take uh, uh, necessary actions to make it compliant so that's uh, about the compliance pain and we tag it based on our uh, internal requirements so we have uh, tagging is something very tough even for developers they just run a cloud formation tag and a formation script and then they wanted to make sure they have to tag each and every resources so initially we had tough time in making those developers to tag all their resources based on application and uh, stacks but we were able to achieve it and then we were monitoring the systems manager patch compliance we have so many servers and we wanted to make sure all those servers are uh, patched at scale so we even have a trend initially uh, when we deployed packbot there are so many unpatched servers online and then later we went ahead and we patched all those servers and you can able to see the graph trend increasing the number of unpatched servers or the patch servers that that failed the audit reduced drastically all these reports we will be exporting to the cloud council uh, uh, team internally so that uh, the developers will take immediate actions instead of giving excuses so the other thing is like uh, if you want to export all this resource uh, uh, policy violations you can just click on uh, the download button and then all those results will be exported in an excel sheet which you can later share it with the uh, developer team and other teams respectively so this is this is an uh, statistics page which uh, always my compliance team uh, goes ahead and watches all the time so here we'll be able to see how many assets we are monitoring how many ac accounts we are monitoring and how, how many Uh, policy violations are there and everything so that's a quick demo and uh, the when i mentioned about the policies and rules they are highly customizable you can uh, it's it's written in java so you can always write more rules as per your organization requirements and as of now we have 100 plus uh, uh, rules out of the box you don't have to write any anything new uh, all these things are, will be installed uh, by default and the deployment is also uh, very smooth so we have a ter terraform script if you run the ter terraform script the entire entire packbot setup will be up and running for you in like less than 15 minutes and uh, we have the overview dashboard which i shown in the demo and uh, the other thing which we noticed is we wanted to make sure we want there are some accounts for example there is an application which is being shared by two business units so we wanted to group those assets based on those uh, business units and then we found uh, the packbot assets group being very helpful for us and we run targeted rules as per that uh, resource group or asset group uh, if you see here we have a uh, we have uh, resource groups and asset groups based on the application here and the configuration management is as simple as that you have a single pane of uh, ui you don't have to go ahead log into the rds server or uh, log into the ship es shipper and then make all the configuration changes no you can do everything from the ui itself so we have the there are three main configurations so the, here one is the uh, batch and the second one is the rules and the third one is the api so the rules uh, i highly work on the rules because i keep writing more and more rules for my organization so Uh, i use a this this feature is very helpful for me as a engineer and then you will be able to see uh and you will be able to also send an email to the respective business unit or a distribution list saying that this is a policy violation and you can send an email uh, you can just export it as an email uh, an image and then you can share it with your business units uh, if there are very immediate uh, actions that are required and uh, 
other things are like we i always get back from the developer saying like uh it's an uh, we wanted to they wanted to have an exception for the next uh, 10 or 15 days to patch it so as a security engineer i all i i have to make sure like after 15 days i, I have to do a follow up with them and then i have to uh, make sure they remediate those security findings and it was a huge manual process and uh, i wanted to automate it uh, i added a feature and uh, team mobile team is like uh, damn awesome they released it as a fe- feature like you can add exceptions uh, to each and every policy violation and when you click on add exception you'll be able to set a date till what date that exception is valid and if it passes beyond that date again it will be coming back to our policy violation queue and we will be doing a follow up with the the security analysts will do a follow up with the business units uh other scenario is like uh, we have a security group uh or a you have a dmz uh network and we wanted to make sure uh the servers inside the dmz network uh doesn't get policy violations just because they have a security group with 0.0.0.0 so th- the purpose is if it is in a dmc it should be open to the internet right and we don't want the packboard to keep on uh, uh hitting it as a policy violation so we can write sticky exception exceptions like you can configure it and you can create uh, you can select the asset group and then what is the ex- exception name and then uh, just uh, write the expired expired date till what time this uh, sticky exception should be valid you can set the date and then if you, you can uh, go ahead and choose your target types uh, like uh, for example in our scenario uh, they are the ec2 servers and other uh, container clusters so we added that exceptions as well and this is something uh, uh, pa- uh, among these uh, five uh, jobs the two last two are uh, available open source and the, the first three are uh my company uh, the organization where i work we wrote customization so uh it's like we have used like a couple of uh, container security products and we wanted to import all those findings into packbot for monitoring purposes and we have uh, a static code analysis tool and we want to make sure all those issues are imported as well and we have a containers uh, vulnerability scanning and host vulnerability scanning tool we import all those things so uh, these are like some custom uh, in house built uh, plugins that i have worked on and built at my organization based on the organization requirements but you can always uh, build these kind of uh, uh, plugins for your organization as well and then use them as a uh, jobs uh, in your packbot so uh, you have already seen this it's like we mo- we monitor the monitor the uh, patch compliance across all our server fleet and container fleet uh, this is an asset dashboard where we have all our asset number of assets and uh, we'll be able to get our uh, single pane of view here and the most important thing that the latest release is like we are uh, creating auto fixes so we don't have to just uh, listen those uh, uh, see those uh, policy violations but also we want to make sure we take automatic remediations on top of those violations we send out uh, the packbot you have you, the out of the box we have like eight or 10 rules right now if there is a public uh, bucket exposed to the internet and uh, it's not as an exception in packbot what will happen is uh, uh packbot will see the violation and send out an email to the business unit saying that hey this uh, bucket is public and open to the internet if you don't close it or if you don't request a cyber security team to add an exception this bucket will be private in the next 4 or 5 hours so we we will be avoiding uh, huge uh, data breaches using these kind of auto remediations across the organization and as of today we have like ec2 instances ssh ports or automatically the security group will be closed and the bucket will be made private the redshift or rds databases uh, they will be private so we will we have a few and there are more coming uh, in future and you are always uh, open for you are always welcome to collaborate and write some custom fixes uh, and contribute to the open source project as well and uh, at the end i would I, i would like to just give a huge shout out to the t mobile oss team who open sourced this fantastic uh, cloud security product for the entire uh, world for free literally so a shout outs to them thank you everyone if you have any questions you can always reach out to me so do you guys have you guys built an approval uh workflow around separation of duties for the exception changes or is that like an administrative task right now yeah so internally uh we we are working uh, we are using service now and then once that email is sent to an outlook that email will be triggered triggering a service now ticket so and inside service now we do the Well, yes we do the work for inside service now thank you yeah uh, managing im roles mm-hmm. always ahead yes you have those kind of rules in uh, 
Yes, they are. So, for example, if there is a role which is saying like uh, EC2 run instances privileges, there is a policy saying like unapproved IAM role has EC2 run or unapproved IAM role has network privilege and next network permissions. So all those IAM roles, will, I love that one actually. I, it was very helpful for me. All those IAM roles will be listed under one policy and then you can export it and uh, ask those guys to fix it. Yeah. Yes. So, yes. So, I, a yes and no. Yes, in the sense we use uh, Azure AD authentication and then, oh yeah, I can repeat the question. So, he was saying like, uh, even the developer teams wants access to Packbot. The DevOps folks already always want to monitor it as well, right? So the developers or DevOps, they will request access for Packbot and provide this kind of open source tool, uh, providing access to every, there is no, there are some tweaks that needs to be done. So in my organization, how I figured it out is like uh, we use Azure AD and then we have, we are using role based access controls, uh, using Azure AD and then I created asset groups and based on those asset groups, I have uh, literally isolated the business units and then I gave permissions to them. So we have to write uh, as per our organization requirements internally. Yeah. Hi, yes, sir. Uh, with, with, have you tried with Packbot with any enterprises actually integrating it with the sandbox block? And have you, have you yeah. seen that it's a workflow or is there any issues with it? So actually, uh, we are not integrating with SIM, but instead we are getting the alerts from the SIM and we are putting it to Packbot. Mm -hmm. So in the other way. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. So we have a template and the template will be in S3 bucket and you can customize the template and you can put your organization logo and then say uh, this uh, S3 bucket is violating uh, your organization cloud security policies. You can com completely customize it. Yes. Yes, sir. Is there any okay. limitation in the policies? Uh, the limitation in the policies is like the number of policies actually. So if you want more policies, we have to customize them and then we have to write it uh, as per our requirements. Apart from that, I don't see any limitations in the policies. What language? Uh, Java. Java. Yes. Are, are, are the, the, um, the tools that you're using, are they compatible with any other language that you guys are acting on for enforcement when you find mm -hmm. compliance issues? It sounds like you're actively scanning all the resources and you find compliance issue, it's enforcing. Do you guys expose those issues also so if I have another system that is querying you and then I can enforce on my own, is that possible as well? Uh, that capability is not uh, right. Yeah, it's not there right now. Yes. Yeah, I can explain that real quick. In a high level, yes, I can t tell it in a high level. So what happens is when a policy is kicked off, a Lambda function will be triggered and that Lambda function will go ahead and initiate a AWS batch job. The batch job will spin up uh, EC2 container. I mean, it will spin up a compute instance and it will use this compute instance to run that batch job. And the bad job will have a Docker image, which will be from the Docker, will be pulled from the Docker Hub. And the, there will be two images, pretty much. One is the rules, and the second is asset collection. First, it collects all the assets from using the cross-account IAM role. It collects all the assets from all the roles and put it, you know, put it in the put it in the S3 bucket. And then the second bad job will be kicked off, and the second bad job will go ahead and run all these uh, policies and rules against those assets that it got collected. So, and then send it to the Elasticsearch, and then we are able to visualize it in Packbot. We have 280, so, and uh, T-Mobile said they have 1,000 plus, so, yeah. And how much time does it take to run? Okay, that's a good question. So, it took us uh, 15 minutes for uh, 240 accounts, so you have to calculate the math. So, Lambda is like event based function. Yes. So whenever you write a policy, any changes after that happens, it will run that. Mm -hmm. What about the systems that are already existing? Mm -hmm. How how you, met, you know, uh, ensure compliance with the new rule on the existing system? So how we do when you do the asset collection, you cal you collect all the you do you pretty much the to describe instances, describe EIPs and everything, right? It will be collecting all those uh, resources, and then you will be able to uh, you can set up the cron job kind of thing. So every two hours we run the public S3 buckets, public SSH ports. So based on those time, we keep running. It's an automatic thing. It's not like a no, we don't have to trigger it out. It's uh, completely automated. I can show that. So you have to go to your admin panel and then 
uh, you have to go ahead and pretty much uh, use rules and policies and you can edit these policies and okay. you yeah, you're still your PowerPoint. Okay, my bad okay i should exit the powerpoint right okay so you just have to go to the rules and then uh, edit those rules so just click on rules and you have the rule frequency here and once you click on the e edit you should be able to set that frequency how frequent you want to run it and then enter the value here yes um uh, okay so uh, there is a roadmap currently in progress and they are going to support next azure and then they go to google cloud and I'm not sure about the VMware, but there is always a uh, chat available and you can always suggest ideas and then you can contribute to them. Um, so you can send out email alerts, but are you able to do SMS alerts? Or yes. Not, uh, so it's pretty much, it uses AWS uh, SNS, Simple Notification Service. And there, if you configure the sub subscription to use an email, it will send an email. Or else if you use mobile, it will send push notifications to the mobile. So I have my own SMS here. So uh, I'm not exactly sure uh, about that, but we can. Uh, there, there should be some ways to customize the application. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, everyone.